Hey everyone, I'm back with a new video of a sculpt of an old, old cartoon. Uh, this is something actually sculpted over the Christmas break for my dad. Uh, he's a big fan of this old cartoon known as Tudor the Turtle. Tudor the Turtle is a little bit of an unheard of cartoon character these days. He was on NBC back in the 60s. He's kind of a classic uh, Bullwinkle, Rocky and Bullwinkle style cartoon, uh, as were really popular on television back in those days. The great thing about these simple kind of geometric limited animation characters is they're very geometric. So I'm going to start here with a sphere and I mask off half of the sphere and, and flatten it there to get the front of his shell. I just use the move tool on the top to stretch and elongate it. Now I'm going to build up the collar. This is all just typical part of the process you see in all my videos where I just block in uh, the overall shapes with basic geometry before I really get to sculpting in the details. So I've blocked in a cylinder for the collar, I'm blocking in a sphere that I've got shaped here for the head. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the trim tool and cut that sphere off, make it more of a half sphere. So we get that, that beak, pronounced beak of his head. And we'll just work that in with a tube here uh, for a neck to connect that in. And I'm not really sure what happened there. <laughs> sometimes, uh, as great as Nomad is, sometimes it's easy to accidentally select the wrong thing. I think I actually switched to the camera when I was trying to edit the curve and threw things out of whack. Uh, those things happen, it's no biggie. All right, so I, I adjusted the geometry of the tube so it had more divisions, so it's a little bit smoother. Now I'm just using the move tool to kind of push it in and shape that chin the way I like it and pull the back of it out to blend in with the cheeks as well as I can. I'm not gonna mesh those things together until I've gotten everything locked in and I'm happy with those things. I'm gonna use some tubes for the legs. We'll block in some spheres for the eyes. What I ended up doing was sculpting this for my dad and I printed him out similar to the process you see in my Popeye video. I printed him out on my resin printer and I ended up painting him up. He ended up looking pretty nice. If any of you happen to remember Tudor the Turtle or are familiar with the character, comment below. I'd, I'd love to hear uh, if, if anyone out there remembers this character. He had a really funny kind of uh, bullwinkle voice. And he would go on, uh, each episode he would kind of wish to be something, like wish to be a, a pilot or an astronaut or something like that. And there was a wizard that would grant him that ability to kind of experience the life of that uh, each episode. And each episode he would get a little bit overwhelmed and asked to get back to his normal life. I've only seen a few episodes. I believe they're on YouTube. You can catch them uh, if, you're, if you're interested. So I'm going to use some cylinders to block in the hat. Uh, I like when I use the cylinders to be able to switch the radius and kind of flare it out like I did the top of the hat there. It's a nice little feature. Anyways, uh, now I'm going to work on hollowing out the collar. The collar gets a little tricky. Kind of get have to get clever with how you do trims and stuff like that. Um, I masked off the center and pulled it down. And now I'm going to mask off the back half and then trim the front half. So that way it doesn't trim all the way through. So I'm going to cut out a triangle shape here for the front of the collar and kind of curve it at the bottom. Let's see if I can get that to work. Uh, it wasn't quite working the way I expected, so now I'm going to try something different with some masking. And I'm just gonna pull it back in and then we'll voxel remesh it and clean it up. I think that works pretty well. Sometimes when you voxel remesh, you get some weird geo and you just kind of have to go in, trim it out or clean it out however you can. Again, just voxel remeshing and using like the flat tool, smooth tool to go in and clean things up. I'll use the pinch tool to kind of sharpen the edges. All right, now I'm gonna go in with my sharp brush that I use all the time 
and kind of create the, the ribbing and the detail on the front of his shell. Add the clay buildup tool to build up the geometry on the front half. Going in with a sharp brush again to just really define those, uh, those lines and those creases. All right, I'm gonna start building in his tie with a cube. Use the move tool. I kept the geometry on the cube, kept all those divisions really low, so that way it was easy to kind of fix the overall shape. And there you see, I kind of messed with the geometry by subdividing a little bit and then pushed it back into the body. One thing you need to think about when you design sculpts for prints is you need to make sure that there are no uh, big holes in your, in your geometry, in your mesh. And so you, you have to make sure that tie sits up and kind of intersects with the body and it, it doesn't stand out from the body. Because if it does, the print's gonna have a hard time uh, dealing with uh, that, that gap and that thin geometry of the tie. So instead, it's best to just kind of mesh it into the body as much as you can. And again, you wanna, you gotta be careful for, uh, on this one, the collar as well, because I have to make sure that neck and those collar and the collar intersect each other so that way there's no holes or gaps in the geometry when it prints. So I try to keep those things in mind as I go. Here, I'm just continuing to refine and, and detail out these shapes. Now I've got them in there the way I like. It's always a fun challenge to try and take a character that is, is designed so f flat uh, in, in 2D and try to make those shapes work in 3D. But I, I was pretty happy with the end result. I'm going to mask off this bottom half and I'm going to pull it forward so that way I can create the suspenders to kind of tuck into his, his uh, yellow ribbing on his belly. All right, here I'm creating the suspenders. The way I do that is I create a tube and then I switch to the gizmo tool and I flatten the tube with the gizmo tool and then can, uh, continue to edit the curve shape the way I want it. Got it pushed into the body and just using, again, clay buildup and all those things refined those. To make the little suspender parts, I just select, just masked out the part on the suspenders and extracted it with the mask tool. Masked out the pupils and then uh, inset them just with the move tool and smoothed it out. I know this, I know a lot of you uh, have asked that I, I slow down. I do have other videos that I do things in real time. Uh, be sure and check out the Nomad for Noobs video as well as the Ender Dragon one I did live. Uh, those are real time and I believe I have some others that aren't quite real time but go into a little bit more depth. But really the purpose of these videos is more of an overview of the process. Uh, I found that, uh, that I usually get a little bit more uh, positive feedback uh, on these shorter videos. Uh, as many, as much as you guys might want to see these in real time, it's it's a lot of the same, just kind of refining uh, process. Certainly, if you have any specific questions, feel free to ask those in the comments below, and I'll I'll see if I can uh, jump in and and uh, provide some insight. So I just used the the tube tools for the fingers. I know that went by really quick. Uh, if you watch my simple hands tutorial, you'll see more in depth how I might do that, but uh, it's not a lot different, even though this character is just really basic and simple, just uh, with those tubes and they're kind of like hot dogs that all kind of mesh into each other. I turned on the ambient occlusion. Sometimes that really helps see the shapes better and it helps you get a good idea of what shapes are going to be really readable on a print. I'm using the sharp brush to kind of detail in the, the straw texture on his hat. And the clay buildup tool as well to create the little, uh, the straw texture. I kind of went quick through the feet as well. Those were just cylinders that I, or sorry, spheres that I trimmed. I elongated and trimmed. A, uh, make them flat, then I use my sharp brush to cut in the, the toes there. I added a base. Uh, what I like to do is I actually like to print the character and the base separately. And uh, then I can see if I, uh, 
I decide the character can stand up well on his own, doesn't need the base. Because uh, sometimes it works well just not having the base. Um, but I like to have it as an option too. So I'll print them both out and then I'll just glue them together if he does have trouble standing up and, or if I just decide for aesthetic reasons I want to keep it. So now I'm going to go ahead and do some basic coloring here in Nomad so I can get to a final render uh, to show off. And, uh, you know, it's really simple for this character. It's just selecting different pieces and then uh, filling him in with the appropriate color. On the on this part here with the shell, I have to get a little bit more uh, detailed in terms of going in and painting that separate color because it's not a separate piece of geo. So that took a little time. We can just kind of paint the borders and then I fill in around it. When I paint the, the blacks of the eyes, uh, what I'll do is I'll set that to metal. And usually that'll make it to where there's no, uh, as long as it's pretty rough metal, it makes it a pretty matte black. So you don't get uh, any just kind of uh, extra sheen on the pupil like you might get if it weren't metal. All right, select the whole character and I'll pull him up, set him on the, the grid here. And we'll start working in some lights. Just I usually just do typical three-point lighting. Took the HDR environment image and brought that down a little bit so I could focus on more of a three-point lighting setup. So three-point lighting, I usually have a cool and a warm light in the front, and then I'll have a very intense uh, rim light. So that's what I'm adding right here. I'm just doing all spots. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add some HDR back in, and then I'll go into the post-process effects and just kind of see, uh, kind of dial in the look a little bit further and see what I, I like. Oh, I forgot to add a tail, so, <laughs> or actually I think I had the tail, just forgot to paint it. <laughs> it gets hidden back behind him. The tail was done with a simple tube that was flared uh, using the radius. All right, so you can see here, again, with that ambient occlusion turned on, it looked like I needed to kind of uh, cut in the, the toes a little bit more. So those would read. Also, you may not know this, but you can go in and I think it's your material settings and turn on smooth shading. So you get uh, some nice shading if it looks too blocky or pixelated. So here's the final result. This was a simple one, quick one. Really nothing new here, just kind of uh, same techniques I always use, just on a different character. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this and want to see more of these, uh, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see me try something different, feel free to suggest. Got a lot going on uh, and a lot planned for the coming year. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and throw this one out there and uh, see if you guys might enjoy it and get something out of it. Until next time, I'll catch you later. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe.